Man, this Halloween party is lame. Yeah, really lame. I mean, he didn't even decorate. Guys, I'm standing right here. And what do you mean I didn't decorate? I spent forever on these decorations. Jack-o-lantern, the smoke machine, spooky Mario, the skeletons. Well, the skeletons do look nice. I mean, you did a good job on those. Well, actually, my mom sent me these, but you guys can't complain about my decorations when you're not even wearing costumes. Well, I thought we weren't doing costumes this year. I specifically put wear a costume on the invitation so I wouldn't be the only one wearing one. <laughs> yeah, you look ridiculous. Who are you supposed to be? You really don't know? I'm Pajama Sam. Pajama Sam. He's like a staple of edutainment games. Or he was, anyway. I guess he hasn't been in a game in a while. Yeah, man, nobody cares about that stuff but you. That is not true. A lot of people care. You care, right? Dude, nobody is sitting right there, and only half of us are paying attention right now. If it's such a big deal, why don't you just tell us about the game? That's really how you want to spend Halloween? Me talking about a game? No, I'd rather do a bunch of drugs and make fun of your decorations some more, but my guy hasn't texted me back yet, so my options are limited. Oh, well, okay then. I'm sorry, what was that? Just go talk about the game already. Fine. Pajama Sam and There's No Need to Hide When It's Dark Outside is my favorite game from Humongous Entertainment, and one that I'm excited to finally get to talk about. Either you know who Pajama Sam is and your nostalgia meter is going off the charts, or you've never heard of him. Or some weird third thing. You guys even gonna look at me? We don't have to be looking at you to be paying attention. Okay... Pajama Sam in No Need to Hide When It's Dark Outside is the first entry in the Pajama Sam franchise, released on October 4th, 1996. It sold nearly 3 million copies and has reportedly won 50 awards for excellence. So yeah, Sam is kind of a big deal. Pajama Sam is a teal kid who is a big fan of Pajama Man, a superhero known for wearing PJs, waving flashlights around at people, and catching bad guys in a lunchbox. I feel like he could have picked a few cooler trademarks, but but hey, that's just me. Looking at the title of the game, it's easy to figure out that the enemy we're trying to defeat is darkness itself. You might think of darkness as simply the absence of light, but it turns out that it's actually a being that lives in Sam's closet. I'm not scared. Darkness lives in my closet, but that's okay. I'm not scared. Sam, nobody believes you. Finding some strength in his Pajama Man comic, Sam decides that the only way to overcome this fear is to go capture darkness himself. He dons his red cape locates his flashlight, mask, and Pajama Sam lunchbox, and slowly ventures into his closet, which is the main setting of the game. <gasps> when I said the game takes place in Sam's closet, that was only half true. It actually takes place in the Land of Darkness, a world that's a combination of Sam's closet and his imagination. You can see a bunch of random items scattered about the environment, showing you that Sam is still in his house, giving anyone older than the age of 13 a reminder of what having an imagination was like. Oh, that's a sad joke. Sam journeys forward in pursuit of darkness, ready to trap the foul beast in his lunchbox, but it doesn't exactly go according to plan. Whoa! Customs, customs, inspection, five feet. We'd rather confiscate these items. They could be dangerous. Most of the trees in this game are huge D-bags, just like in real life. Yeah, that's right, I'm talking about you, David. There is one nice tree, though, the lone tree who is oddly completely blue. I feel bad about you losing your things. 
Yeah, how am I supposed to capture darkness without all my stuff? Well, I'm sure your things are here in the land of darkness somewhere. Did somebody say objective? Well, no, but I thought it. And you know what? Upon further review, it turns out that this tree is also a D-bag, since she was clearly the one that trapped Sam in the first place. I feel bad about you losing your things. Our objective in this game is to retrieve the necessary items to eradicate darkness from the land. Sam's mask, flashlight, and lunchbox. I always like to go to the boat dock first, and by always, I mean yes, I've played this game many, many times. Hi! Hello! My name's Sam. Oh, pleased to meet you, Sam. You can call me Otto. This is Otto, and he's a wooden boat. A sad, sad, stupid wooden boat. Would you give me a ride across the river? Oh, no! I can't go in the water, I'd sink. I'm made of wood, you know. But wood floats. No, I don't think so. I had this friend and he told me this story about his dentist brother who, um, he was made of wood and he got in the water and he sank. Really? Oh my god, that's exactly how I'd react. Did Pajama Sam help shape my personality? Wood floats in the water. Oh, I wish that were true. Now how does one convince a wooden boat that wood floats? Well, we'll need some wood to use as a demonstration. Uh-oh. I hope that nice tree is not too mad that I lost her rope. At least I got this great piece of wood. 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 That was weird. See? It floats. Wood floats. Yeah? So you'll float too. And here we see the ever-elusive education half of edutainment. Now that we've been fully educated on the complex concept of wood floating, we're able to get rides from Otto. Let's go sailing. Okay. Well, wait a minute, what was that? A mixed messages, man. Now I don't know what to think. Obviously, I can't talk about everything that happens in this game or explain how every obstacle is crossed, so if you're familiar with Pajama Sam 1, you might notice I'm going to gloss over some things. Like right now. Down this pathway is another herd of horrible, awful, nightmarish, jerk, D-bag trees. That's right, I'm talking about you, David. Once Sam makes his way past them, he spots his mask, currently being worn by a carrot, which I guess means that Sam's head is the size of a carrot? That's the proper use of the transitive property, right? The Salad Liberation Front. We're a group of veggies fighting against the core system. We're tired of being relegated to the salad. We want to be the main course. Whatever. I just want my mask back. Yeah, that's right. Pajama Sam doesn't care about your problems. I'll tell you what. The other carrots are being held prisoner in the refrigerator in Darkness's kitchen. If you help me free the carrots, I'll give you back the mask. Well, nothing in life is free, not even stuff that you already own, which means that to get this mask back from the politically motivated carrot, we have to help him liberate his friends from Darkness's kitchen. Darkness lives in a giant treehouse, which for the most part is incredibly cool, except for how you actually get into it. Whoever built this place went through the trouble of hollowing out an entire tree, but instead of a front door, they were like, now let's make an elevator that's manually operated by throwing rocks into a basket. Also, it doesn't go up all the way. Perfect. Darkness's kitchen is filled with common kitchen appliances, which sounds normal until they start singing. I've got big and down to a science. I'm the biggest household of lions. Yeah, man, uh, good for you. I suppose if I was the biggest household appliance, you wouldn't be able to stop me from singing about it either. The refrigerator, who is holding the carrots captive, is a little musically challenged, though. I can't let you in, but you might liberate the carrots that I'm holding for the huge green salad. Come on, dude, are you even trying? Freeing the captive carrots is as easy as deceiving a refrigerator, which turns out to not be all that hard. I'll open up my door so you can put that rogue inside my drawer. Once all of the carrots are free, the fridge seems completely unfazed. In darkness's house, it's always lunchtime. All the time, lunchtime, munchtime, crunch time. Oh my god, that was terrible. One item down, two to go. Next, we're going to look for the all-metal Pajama Sam lunchbox. Otto takes us under a bridge, past a shed, where we pick up an important-looking oil can, and down some waterfalls. Ah! 
There we can see the lunchbox underwater, but our short, stubby, pathetic child arms are too short to reach. We're gonna need another item, and luckily, with my years of experience, I know exactly where to get it. There's a set of doors we need to speak to on the second story of Darkness's house. Hello, and welcome to the Brain Tickler, the game where you get to show how smart you really are. To pass through into the next room, we're quizzed over a quartet of questions. In this playthrough, our categories are music, computer science, cooking, and the land of darkness, which is the last and most important question each time you play. What instrument do you play by banging on it with a stick? What is the name for a cooking device which uses microwaves to heat food? Yeah, these guys are really testing your mind grapes with these questions. What is the best computer programming language? Uh, oh, there it is. Only a geek would worry about something like that. That's right, suck it, geeks. You just got pajama owned. Ugh, let's throw this joke away and pretend it never happened. I'm sorry about that. The first three questions are as easy as deceiving a refrigerator refrigerator, but the question we really need to worry about is the Land of Darkness question. What is the reading on the water meter located in the mines near Darkness's house? Well, I have no idea, and the game doesn't even let you take a guess unless you've actually been to the water meter in the mines, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. Time to explore the last major area of the game, the mines. They don't play a huge part in this playthrough, but they really are one of my favorite areas. The others being the rivers, Darkness's house, and every Everywhere else, I mean, just look at how cool every screen in this game is. We can't just barge into the mines, though. First, we have to get acquainted with King the Minecart. See, I, I used to roll all over the place on this here track. Up, down, sideways. But then I got rushed. Rust? Yeah. Rust! He's a bit stuck due to some rust, but thanks to our oil can theft earlier, we can help him out. The only thing we're after in the mines is the number on the water meter, but it's also important to note this one-way door. Don't even bother, kid. It's a one-way door. Hey, King, what's this thing? Well, that's a water meter. It says 953. Now that we have all of the info we need, it's back to the brain tickler. 953. That's absolutely right! You correctly answered questions from all four categories. That makes you the new Brain Tickler Grand Champion! I would not be surprised if these guys inspired some game show themed door filled nightmares for people. Speaking of doors, this doorway leads into a different kind of doorway. The kind that's a hallway made of doors. Yikes! The doorknob came off! I didn't do it! I barely touched it! Oh man, grabbing something, stealing it, and then lying about it. I wonder where Sam learned how to do that. I feel bad about you losing your thing. Down the doorway hallway is a study which has a secret bookcase door that's not so secret. The Book of Clues. If you are a clever fellow, try to push in only yellow. Yeah, that's less of a clue and more of the exact answer, Sam, but okay. I think I saw something on the other side of the door. Oh really, Sam? <laughs> I think I saw something on the other side of the door. Okay, well, you don't have to brag about it. To get the magnet, we have to go back to the study, and we do that through the use of the one-way door we found earlier. Howdy, Sam! Hi, King! Run back to the study, grab the magnet, and we can finally get that all-metal lunchbox out of the water. What are you gonna do with that? Magnets attract metal, you know. Oh no, I don't think they do. Oh Otto, I bet your parents are real proud. You're a uh, boat parents, I guess. Last but not least, we have to get our flashlight and lucky us, we already have everything we need. Over at the shed, we need to use the doorknob we stole as well as oil the door hinges with the stolen oil and in we go. Thanks Sam for teaching me that stealing is not only helpful, but fun too. Now that we've retrieved all three of our stolen items, it's time to finally face darkness. 
Okay, this is it. This is the big one. And so we've come full circle. We began the game by falling into our own closet, and we end by entering darknesses, which he's locked in for some reason. The key is easy to find, but I never really understood why I needed to find one anyway. Who trapped darkness in the closet in the first place? I mean, he couldn't lock himself in there, so I don't know. It seems like there's more to the story here. Darkness? It is I, Pajama Sam. I've come to vanquish you. Vanquish? Is that fun? I'm gonna capture you and lock you in my signature edition all metal pajama man lunchbox. Oh dear, that doesn't sound like fun at all. Why would you want to put me in a box? Yeah, you know, why would you want to put him in a box, Sam? He was already locked up before. If anything, you just helped release darkness under the world. You mean you don't have any friends? Well... No. Yeah, no surprise. Why don't you go program something, you friendless geek? Let's go! Predictably, Sam becomes friends with Darkness and plays a tic-tac-toe game called Cheese and Crackers with him. I like this game. I better go home now, though. My mom might get worried. Okay, maybe we can play some more tomorrow night. Okay, R. Kelly, you enjoy the closet, all right? Creepy age difference aside, and forgetting all of the questionable moral lessons we've learned along the way, the game ends up teaching us that maybe our fears aren't as big as we imagine. In our own mind, issues become huge in the same way that a simple closet can become an enormous world for Sam. I mean, at the end of the day, we should all just relax, live our lives, and play tic-tac-toe with strangers in our closet. Like other humongous entertainment adventures, there are multiple versions of the game that cycle through when you start another playthrough. Key items are in different places, you obtain them through different methods, and new areas open up. I remember getting so excited when this tunnel in the mines opened up, it was always fun to see what paths I might have to take. And that's not all. There are some mini games you can come across, like cheese and crackers and a snake-like mining game, as well as a scavenger hunt where you try and locate all of Sam's lost socks throughout the game. Combined with the variables that randomize the playthrough a bit, Pajama Sam 1 felt massive to me as a kid, and even now there's so much more I could talk about. I mean, I don't even think I mentioned the soundtrack, which is one of the best parts of the game. If you're a child looking for an adventure game, or an adult looking for a child's adventure game, give Pajama Sam and No Need to Hide When It's Dark Outside a try. I doubt you'll be disappointed. <sighs> Good night, darkness. So there you have the first entry in the Pajama Sam series. Hopefully this sheds some light onto why I like the game so much. I know I mention it pretty frequently and... Oh, thanks guys. I didn't think you were paying attention actually. What? Dude, nobody is listening to you. My guy is here. All right, who here wants some illegal drugs? I do. Man, these decorations are terrible. Cool skeletons though.